district. Then, in a startling leap from obscurity, the bar owner quickly became a state senator and owner of a bank. His son, Joseph, would inherit the benefits. He would graduate from Harvard and soon marry Rose, daughter of Boston Mayor John Honey Fitz Fitzgerald, famed for his political clout and his singing of Sweet Adeline in a lilting Irish tenor. Now, barely a generation away from poverty, Joseph Kennedy vastly enlarged the family fortunes, began the rapid accumulation of four sons and five daughters, and luxurious family citadels in Hyannisport and Palm Beach. At the age of nine, John Fitzgerald Kennedy could celebrate a gift of $1 million for his birthday. Cayman Newberry, a close friend and one-time classmate of Kennedy, recalls the family in the late 1930s. Bobby was still a, a kid then, and frankly, rather a brat at that age. <laughs> Joe Kennedy, Jr., was, I think everybody will tell you this, was really, I suppose, the natural politician of the family. One wonders what would have happened if Joe hadn't been killed in the war, whether he might not have become president. If you ask me what do you remember most about Jack Kennedy, immediately I would say his humor. And by humor, it was his ability to make fun of himself. He very rarely made fun of other people. He was the butt of all his own jokes. He was a very enthusiastic person about no matter what he was doing. If he was lying in the sun, trying to get a sunburn, he somehow made that a project. He made life a project. Kathleen was, was adorable. I think everybody who knew her would, had to be a little bit in love with Kathleen. She had such a zest for life. There was a family that when you went and stayed with them, they made you part of the family. They didn't treat you as a guest. I'll tell you what I think is marvelous about Jack Kennedy. He made you feel that you were probably his best friend. Somehow, in footloose fashion, interrupted by bouts of illness, John Kennedy was educated. He attended several colleges at home and abroad, spent a semester in London where his father had been appointed ambassador to the court of St. James, graduated cum laude from Harvard in 1940. Briefly, he went west to Stamford. He was going to business school, and he was there for one quarter, and he was quite a colorful fellow on campus. He had bought a Buick convertible out of his, the proceeds from his book, uh, While England Slept. And here you have this attractive, young, bright man uh, driving around in his Buick convertible, and there are a lot of attractive, bright women down there at Stanford, and uh, they seem to get together. Remote from the workaday world of ordinary Americans, John Kennedy would later confess that he only knew of the Great Depression of the 1930s by reading about it at Harvard. But now, a shadow fell on playtime. With World War II came the first of a series of tragedies that ultimately would bring violent death to four of the Kennedy children. In it, Joseph Kennedy Jr., oldest son being groomed for a promising political career, was lost on a secret air mission. Later, Kathleen would be killed in an air crash in France. As a Navy lieutenant commanding the PT-109, John Kennedy himself won medals but nearly lost his life when his attack craft was sheared in half and sunk by a Japanese destroyer off the Solomon Islands. Later, invalided, back from the Pacific, Kennedy was sent to the Chelsea Naval Hospital near Boston. After the war, working as a special correspondent for the International News Service, Kennedy covered both the founding of the United Nations at San Francisco and the Potsdam Conference of Truman, Churchill, and Stalin. But Kennedy would find himself restless as a bystander at great events. He cared less about reporting the news than in making it. For the first time, with Joseph Jr. gone, he began to think of a political career. During his wartime convalescence from malaria and a troublesome back injury, he could see the distant tower of the old North Church, 
still marking the birth of our nation in its revolutionary past. Not far away lay City Hall, close to family history, scene of spirited and sometimes squalid political battles. Between these two poles, the dream and the down-to-earth business of daily practical politics, Kennedy would set his course. Out of the darkness it will come, big as two city blocks, with 700 legs, 5,000 eyes, and it feeds on electricity. When you see it, you'll never forget it. It's the Main Street Electrical Parade, now more powerful than ever, back Saturday and Sunday nights at Disneyland, open late every weekend. Larry Cedar, a real label lover. He's wearing fine wool slacks by Tattersall. At Bullock's, they cost $70 with the label. Brendan Dillon Jr. is wearing the identical wool slacks by Tattersall without the label. At C&R, they're only $49.90, $20 less than Bullock's for the exact same slacks. Cedar has the label. Dillon has the money. C&R, now we're name dropping. Minolta Freedom 3. Freedom. New and worry free. Freedom. Auto focusing. Freedom. Auto everything. Freedom. Click is all you do. Freedom. Freedom 3 comes through. Freedom. Freedom's what you've got. Freedom to take your fair shot. The Minolta Freedom line of 35 millimeter cameras. Only from the mind of Minolta. At Chief Auto Parts, we know if there's one thing you've got to depend on, it's your car. So if you come to our Memorial Day sale, your car can be more dependable with Castro. Just 75 cents a quart. AC and Motorcraft spark plugs just 54 cents each after rebate. And Guardian brake shoes and pads only 5.88 each. So if you really depend on your car, remember Chief keeps it running for the life of your car. The Chief Auto Parts Memorial Day sale ends May 26th. The war over, Kennedy decided to try his luck in the rough and tumble of Boston politics, enlisted the aid of fellow veterans. Longtime associate Dave Powers recalls, I think I was been in politics uh, seriously was when uh, young Jack Kennedy knocked on the, my door on the third floor of a three-decker in Charlestown in January of, of 1946. Here was this tall, thin, handsome young man, and he stuck out his hand in the semi-darkness. I think we had a 15-watt bulb. They had to keep down expenses, and uh, he said he was Jack Kennedy. He was a candidate for Congress. I never saw anyone work like Jack did, and that was true in that 46 campaign as he climbed the tenements. He shook more hands and kissed more babies than the other nine candidates together. The key was this veteran bit. See, in 46, uh, if you did not have the word veteran beside your name, you couldn't be elected dog catcher. Uh, one time at a rally, a fellow stood up and said, uh, Hey, Kennedy, where are you from? New York, Palm Beach, Cape Cod? You're a carpetbagger. He walked over the front of the stage and said, Nobody asked me my address when I was on a PT boat in the Solomon Islands and the crowd loved it. Rallying friends and family for the Boston campaign, Kennedy received a major boost from his own grandfather, Honey Fitz Fitzgerald, one time mayor of the city. But sometimes the booster threatened to take over the show. Former Navy pal,